I'm Tyler Schumann. And I'm Hunter Grimes. And this is a broadcast of NAC News. Protests in St. Louis have happened over the acquittal of police officer Jason Stockley. Let's go to McKinley with the story. On Friday, September 15th, a Missouri judge acquitted former St. Louis policeman officer Jason Stockley. He was found not guilty of the shooting death of black motorist Anthony Lamar Smith in 2011. The event started when Stockley's partner Brian Bonacci tried to arrest Smith for a suspected drug bust. They pulled up behind Smith, and Smith tried to back out. He hit the police car and sped away. Stockley can be seen firing his department-issued handgun at Smith's car. The chase ended when SUV hit Smith's car. Stockley fired his gun at Smith's car. After he fired the gun, he went back to the SUV to grab his first aid kit. But when he arrived at Smith's car, it was too late. He claimed to have seen a revolver in the passenger seat. However, the revolver did not have any of Smith's DNA on it, but it did have Stockley's DNA on it. Drugs were found in the car with Smith's DNA on them. Judge Wilson wrote, The gun was a full-size revolver and not a small gun, such as a Derringer that can fit in the palm of one's hand or into the side pocket of pants without being obvious. Wilson also wrote, Stockley was not wearing a jacket. If he had such a gun in his possession, it would have been visible on the cell phone video. An estimate of 120 people were arrested on Sunday. The protest began peacefully and became violent after nightfall. The St. Louis de Police Department were reportedly chanting, Whose streets are streets? To Mr. Roush was his thoughts. I'm here with Mr. Roush, North Andrews High School history teacher, on his opinion about the St. Louis protests. Mr. Roush, how do you think the police handled the protests this week in St. Louis? Well, I think they did a very good job. You know, part of the problem is that when the police do engage the protesters, it only makes the situation worse. So what they were doing was basically just containing the situation, allowing them their First Amendment right to protest, but making sure that property damage was kept to a minimum and that people were not hurt. So overall, I think they did a very good job. Well, that's it from Mr. Roush. Wow, McKinley, what a disaster. Seemingly, there has been an increase in natural disasters. Let's take a more in-depth look at the story. Is this the end? There have been multiple natural disasters recently. This includes multiple hurricanes that have made landfall along with extremely devastating earthquakes. The most destructive of the hurricanes to come through has been Harvey. It had the most buildings destroyed along with a moderate amount in its death toll. Harvey was a category four with five being the strongest. It ran through Texas, not slowing down until it hit Houston. Hurricane Irma went through the Caribbean and went through Florida. Hurricane Jose came through the Caribbeans and went through all the islands without skipping a beat. Recently, Hurricane Mariah has been tearing through Puerto Rico. Mariah has been devastating so far. To go with the hurricanes, there has been an increase in earthquakes. Mexico has seen two recent earthquakes that have rattled everyone within a 100-mile radius, not just with the aftershock, but from the devastation that it has caused. Just outside of Atexo, Pueblo, Mexico, an earthquake with a magnitude of 7.1 rattled old buildings until they crumbled. The death toll has already surpassed 200, and there are rescue teams still searching through the rubble. On September 20th, there was a stunning earthquake in Japan. The earthquake had a magnitude of 6.1, struck 185 miles from Ishinomaki, Miyagi Prefecture, Japan. It should be felt through the entire nation of Japan. Recently, our school had a disaster relief fundraiser, Hats for Houston, where we raised nearly $400 for the American Red Cross. All of these natural disasters have been chaotic for the world, but we have been banding together in our time of need. This is Hunter Grimes at NSA News. Really, dude? You really didn't listen to my story? Well, I did, but I'm already on to the next story. Maggie knew the story about iPhones. So let's play that. Apple just announced its new addition to their smartphone family on the company's 10th anniversary. The iPhone 8 and iPhone X photos were announced last week to mix reviews. The iPhone 8 has a smaller screen than the iPhone X, but only the iPhone X's screen covers the entire front part of the phone. The iPhone X is also a little bit taller than the iPhone 8, but both phones share similar technological features. New features of the phone include facial recognition, no home button, no headphone jack, and a new and improved Siri. Some people are excited about the new phone, especially the full frontal screen as well as the glass back. Others, however, are not excited about these two new phones, especially with the glass back making a comeback. The last iPhone with a glass back was the iPhone 4. North Andrew sophomore Sean Houston said this about the new phones. 
I don't like the new iPhones because they don't have a headphone jack. When asking around about whether a few students would be buying a new iPhone, the general consensus was no. A lot of students also said that they were confused as to why there isn't an iPhone 9. Apple is to have said to release the iPhone 8 and the iPhone X because it is the company's 10th anniversary and they didn't want a 9. Last broadcast, we looked at the new students in high school. In this broadcast, we're looking at the new students in middle school. Let's go take a look at Jaden Sawyer. Layden Wiley is a sixth grader this year at North Andrew. She previously attended Helena Elementary. Her favorite food is mac and cheese. Her favorite class at North Andrew is PE, and she looks forward to being involved in music this year. Her favorite color is black, and she likes all types of music. Aspen Cole is a sixth grader this year at North Andrew. She previously attended Minnie Klein Elementary in Savannah. Her favorite food is pears. Her favorite activity is art, and her favorite color is teal. She enjoys listening to country music. Aspen looks forward to making new friends this year at North Andrew. Megan Yarbo is a sixth grader this year at North Andrew. She was previously homeschooled. Her favorite food is Kraft mac and cheese. Megan looks forward to making new friends and maintaining good grades this year at North Andrew. She enjoys listening to country music and pop music, and her favorite color is yellow. Anna Yarbo is a, an eighth grader this year at North Andrew. She previously attended Charles S. Rouge Middle School. Her favorite food is strawberries. She enjoys participating in cross country. Anna looks forward to being a part of the school play this year at North Andrew. She listens to all types of music, and her favorite color is purple. Brian Embry is an 8th grader this year at North Andrew. He previously attended Rubidoux Middle School. His favorite food is tater tot casserole, and his favorite color is sky blue. He enjoys hunting and fishing after school. Brian looks forward to getting good grades this year at North Andrew. He enjoys listening to old country music. <laughs> and we'd like to welcome the new students here at North Andrew. And now let's go take a look at sports with Trevor Madison. Thanks, guys. North Andrew had a consecutive 48 straight wins in the regular season, but that came to a close two weeks ago against Sacred Heart. North Andrew's unbeaten streak in the regular season came to a close last Friday. North Andrew had not lost in the regular season in the last 48 games, which began during the 2011 season. Finally, the streak came to a close when North Andrew fell to Sacred Heart 88-48. to The game started an hour late because North Andrew's bus blew out a tire on the way to the game and was forced to pull over on the side of the road for 37 minutes until another bus came. After that, the new bus was caught in heavy traffic and came to a standstill various times. North Andrew finally arrived at Sacred Heart around 6.45 p.m. Sacred Heart's offense was unstoppable as the Gremlins totaled 519 yards and 12 touchdowns in the Cardinals' loss. The game was back and forth at the start, and at the end of the first quarter, the game was tied at 14. However, in the second quarter, the Gremlins pulled away, outscoring the Cardinals 31-6. After a successful drive, a safety, and another score, the Gremlins scored 18 points in only 23 seconds. North Andrew was down 20-45 to at the half. The Gremlins never looked back, scoring 44 points in the second half and running away with the game. The final score was 88-48 to Sacred Heart. Cardinals running back Gus Schunk was injured during the first drive and did not play in the rest of the game. Schunk is questionable for next week against Stanbury. Also, Hunter Grimes was hurt in the beginning of the second quarter, tearing his meniscus, MCL, and possibly his ACL. Grimes is expected to be out for at least eight weeks, if not the whole season. North Andrew will play unbeaten Stanbury next week. And then we caught up with North Andrew quarterback Jacob Powelson about his opinion. Here with North Andrew quarterback Jacob Powelson. Jacob, last Friday against Sacred Heart was not exactly the result that we wanted. What exactly happened? Uh, I think we came out uh, pretty strong, so did they. So it was pretty even throughout the first half, but uh, we kind of fell apart towards the end of the second quarter. And they, they got, on, got up on us pretty good, and then uh, they just kind of stayed, stayed away from us for the rest of the game. And then one thing that really uh, went wrong in game was the defense giving up 88 points, measure records only, only go back to 2005, but at that time no North Andrew team has ever given up that many points before. What are you guys going to try to do going forward? I think we're really just going to have to uh, study and get more of a game plan towards our next opponents and just kind of figure out what we're going to do defensively, and we've been working towards that pretty well this week. And, and then one kind of shining light was you and your passing, you passed for 377 yards and are already over 1,000 yards this season. How big has that been for the team? It's been a big part of our offense. You know, we kind of relied on it, but I think we're developing a running game too. So it's uh, it's pretty important, I guess you could say, for our offense, but uh, we're working on our 
offensive line, you know, just to keep the protection up and uh, developing more of a running game too. And then also, since since you lost to Sacred Heart, it, it, it's likely that you'll probably get the second seed in districts, but then that, that would result in you having the state semifinal at home. Um, is that something? Is that a help or a hindrance? Do you think? Um, I think it could be a help because I don't think we're too worried about you know where we're going to play because I think we can play just to get anywhere. Um, We've always had districts, you know, at home all, all throughout the past five years, but uh, I don't think that's going to affect us too much. But I guess the state's a semifinal game. If we can uh, get there, it would be, be pretty cool to have one game. All right, I'm here with Jacob Matthew, Jacob Powell, Center of Medicine Reporting, NAC News. Even though the 48 consecutive regular season game win streak was snapped, there are still some silver linings from the loss. Even though the Cardinals lost against Sacred Heart, there are a few silver linings. Jacob Powelson turned in another solid passing performance, going 21 for 31 for 377 yards and four touchdowns. That performance rocketed Jacob Powelson into first place in yards passing from all of eight main quarterbacks, totaling 1,067 total yards over the course of the season. The game was also a non-conference game, so North Andrew still has the opportunity to win the GRC championship. Also, the Cardinals will now likely get the second seed in districts, with Mound City likely receiving the first seed. Mound City is undefeated this season, and has a much easier schedule the rest of the season. It is potentially better that the Cardinals will play the district championship on the road. Mr. Rule says that if the Cardinals play on the road in the district championship, if the one seed from District 1 wins that district, then the Cardinals will have the state semifinal game at home. Even though the loss to Sacred Heart was a crushing blow for the football program, it could have been a blessing in disguise. Here at NAC News, we've started a, a new segment that looks at the athletes of the broadcast. The athletes of the broadcast will be students that we compare stats and info as an NAC News team to see which, which athletes have benefited North Andrew the most. The athletes of this broadcast are Gentry Koppel and Gus Schunk. Schunk, playing in his first game of the year, gave an immediate increase to North Andrew's offense, providing a much needed running back. Against Kansas City East Christian, Schunk had six carries for 98 yards and four touchdowns in a season debut. We caught up with Shunk to talk about his performance. I'm standing here with the broadcast athlete of the week, Gus Shunk. Gus Shunk, how big was the game against Kansas City East last Friday? Pretty big. How do you feel that you performed? I feel like I did pretty well. You could definitely say that with all the touchdowns that you had and the many rushing yards. So Gus, how hard was it to become eligible this season? Uh, not that hard. I didn't have math. And we know that against Sacred Heart that you hurt your knee pretty bad. Are you getting ready for the game Friday? Yeah. And how do you plan to keep your success going? Keep working. And that is Gus Schelk reporting in AC News. Our female athlete of the broadcast is Gentry Koppel. Koppel transferred this year from Hale, Missouri, and has had an immediate impact for the team. Koppel has the second highest fielding percentage and has given much needed offense, having the highest batting average in balls in play, on base plus slugging, and wins above replacement. Koppel has also had a huge impact on the base path, stealing a team high eight bases. We visited with Koppel about her immediate impact on the softball team. I'm standing here with Gentry Koppel, the female athlete of the broadcast. Gentry, how much of a change has it been from coming from Hale to North Andrew this year? Um, there has been a change. It hasn't been a huge change because my, my old school, it was a little bit smaller, but not too bad. So it's been a good transition. And, and uh, what are some different things at North Andrew that you like as opposed to Hale? I like that we have a little bit longer of a day, so that way at seminar we have that last 20 minutes to really work with our teacher. And the coaches and just staff has been really good to accept me, and so is all of the, all of the students. And, and then you've been batting leadoff for the entire year and, and uh, playing catcher for most games, but then sh a shortstop for some other games. First of all, do you enjoy batting leadoff? And then second of all, why has there been a change in some you most of the time you played catcher, but some you've also played short? Um, I like batting leadoff. It challenges me because I have to really watch the pitcher, time, get timing down, and as you can tell, I do hit a lot of foul balls. So sometimes my timing is a little off. But for the most part, I enjoy it. And catching is my favorite. It's my passion. I love to do it. But I also know that in bigger games, sometimes my team needs me to go to shortstop. And for the better of the team, that's what I'll do. Hey, and then, of course, against uh, Stanbury, you, you hit your first home run. How uh, cool was that? It was a 
awesome feeling. He, at first, I actually did not realize that I hit a home run until the car was like, hey, you can slow down. <laughs> and after that, it was really exciting to cross home plate and have my team there cheering me on. All right, I'm here with Kintry Koppel, Trevor Madison reporting in AC News. While we've been talking about football and softball quite a bit, we have not yet talked about cross country. North Angeles Junior High and high school cross country teams are off to hot starts this year. The high school team consists of Jaden Bowman, Carly Donahue, Ezra Moan, Robert Moody, Hannah Raymond, Chloe Stebe, Chad Wilmus, and Ryan Wilmus. Ezra Moan placed 10th at Corinda. Also, Ryan Wilmus placed 6th at Maryville and 1st at Corinda. The junior high season is in full swing as well. The junior high team is made up of Briley Brinks, Jacqueline Reedinger, Michaela Seibert, Keaton Tipton, and Anna, and Anna Yarbrough. Anna Yarbrough placed 19th, and Briley Brinks placed 9th at Corinda. Also at Spring Garden, Anna Yarbrough placed 19th, Michaela Seibert placed 6th, Briley Brinks placed 5th, and Jacqueline Reedinger placed 4th. Cross Country coach Kelly Seibert had this to say about the season so far. Quote, the 2017 cross country team has been working hard and gaining miles since this summer. Each runner is getting better and times are improving every meet. End quote. North Angeles cross country will try to keep the good results coming as the season progresses. And we do not have a story on it yet, but, but last Friday, North Andrew lost to uh, Stanbury 54 to 36. They will look to rebound this week against Albany. That's a look at sports. I'm Trevor Madison. Back to the news desk with Hunter and Tyler. <laughs> Thank you, Trevor. This concludes our broadcast of NAC News. I'm Tyler Schumann. I'm Hunter Grimes. Signing off.